أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام را تلك آيات الكتاب المبين السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد النبي العربي الأعظم وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين كثير صوروا لنا دخول الإسلام سلمي إلى القدس قصة عمر لكن هذه الوثيقة تنقل لنا وجها آخر لاحظ يسميهم أعداء الله ومنعون من الذهاب إليها منعوهم حتى يذهبوا إلى بيت لحم هددونا بالذبح والهلاك أي واحد فيكم يجرأ يروح لبيت لحم حنذبحه ممكن تتفلسف ممكن تقول الإسلام بدأ بريء وداعش غيرت صورته لكن هذه الوثيقة تضعنا أمام الأمر الواقع الإسلام منذ بدايته هدد الناس ناس مسالمين بالذبح والإسلام خربوا بلادنا وغزونا أخذوا أراضينا قتلوا أجدادنا In other words, Christianity is a danger. It's a danger. It not only corrupts the minds of children, it actually leads adults into unhealthy, dangerous activities. There are other Christians, often the most dogmatic, who create wars. مجزرة طريق الموت عندما أباد جورج بوش جيش صدام حسين عند انسحابه من الكويت. These things are works of imperial propaganda created by the Romans. Um, we are in a world of, of, of craziness that is caused by people not understanding these texts. and come to this conclusion. You can know that Christianity was an invention of the Romans. It was done to pacify their subject. So I, I came to the realization, the conclusion that the Flavians had been involved in the creation of the Christian religion just by understanding the real politic of that whole period, by cutting through the propaganda and stepping aside from the various Christian claims and uh, uh, the religious literature of the period. He is also written um, at the court of the Flavian emperors. In the Western world, things have moved on and um, there is considerable doubts regarding 
Jesus' existence and in any capacity at all. The way that the Romans governed govern their empire was through religion. The Romans were very good at inventing religions. They had whole departments of bureaucracy, a whole civil service that was dedicated to, to doing so. This is really important for our culture to understand where Christianity came from. And this is direct evidence. You can actually walk this path and come to this conclusion. You can know that Christianity was an invention of the Romans. It was done to pacify their subjects. These Christians naively imagine that without an historical Jesus, we have a terrible problem explaining the colorful New Testament story. But you know, that isn't so. The answer is very simple, not to say obvious. In other words, the story of Jesus is counterfeit. It's simply rehashed earlier material. This is really important for our culture to understand where Christianity came from. And this is direct evidence. You can actually walk this path and come to this conclusion. You can know that Christianity was an invention of the Romans. It was done to pacify their subjects. And the penny drop, the penny drop that Jesus as a human being never existed. The presentation of the Jesus character, it's somewhat of a composite of many messianic leaders of the time. Can you think that Christianity is really paganism by a different name? Uh, now it feels completely obvious. Some of us are saying that this was a sun god turned into a Jewish man. In all of this, we're dealing with literature. We're not dealing with history. So the answer is no, there is no um, history to this character of Jesus. It's entirely a literary creation. One is led to the conclusion that the Romans must be involved in the production of this literature. The fact that the Gospels are known to us in Greek and, and not in uh, Aramaic or Hebrew is, I think, just evidence of, of their authorship. They were not written by any followers of Jesus who would have surely spoken Aramaic. And if they had been fishermen and simple folk, they would not have had the literal skills to write them anyway. <laughs> كما نرى هنا عنوان هذا الكتاب هو المؤامرة الرومانية لصناعة أو اختراع شخصية يسوع المسيح لجوزيف أتويل ويتكلم عن فترة سبعين ميلادية حيث حرف وزور المستعمر الروماني تاريخ المشرق العربي لا سيما تاريخ فلسطين the book Caesar's Messiah shows that the Gospels were written by a family of Roman Caesars called the Flavians. They created the Gospels as a political tool. Why are the Gospels called Gospels? That's a critical question. The word Gospel in Greek is Evangelion, and it means good news of military victory. Whose military victory are we celebrating here in these Gospels? Well, it seems to me that we are celebrating clearly the Roman military victory because these events, the um, Battle of Gadara, the Battle of the Lake of Galilee, the successful battle at Jerusalem, these are battles that the Romans won. And Kalimat Injil Hia Kalima Arabia Kadalikal Amr Asluha Jale Jale Ay Avhara Kashafe Audaha Ach Bara وكذلك المسلمون يعتقدون بأن الوحي نزل على النبي عيسى بإنجيل واحد أما في الطرف الآخر فإنهم يعتقدون بأن هناك أربعة أناجيل وهذه الأناجيل كتبت باللغة اليونانية ولم تكتب 
باللغة العربية بلهجة أرامية ويقولون ويعتقدون بأن كلمة إنجيل هي يونانية من إيفانجيليون وعندهم تعني البشارة بالنصر العسكري أو الخبر السار بالانتصار العسكري ونحن نتساءل الانتصار العسكري لمن؟ ليسوع المسيح الذي نادى بالمحبة والسلام أو الانتصار العسكري كان لجيش تايتس القائد الروماني الذي انتصر على الثورات في فلسطين وغير فلسطين الكتاب المنزل هو إنجيل واحد وكلمة إنجيل هي كذلك عربية كوح من جلى أي أوضح وأظهر وكشف وأوحى وبشر وأنبأ أم أشاهد مع هذا الفيديو ثم نعود This is clearly proof. This, these events, when you lay them on top of one another and you compare, you know, the, the parallels, are absolutely clear evidence that Jesus is a fictional character whose story is based upon Titus Flavius. One of the most powerful proofs for the fabrication of the character called Jesus Christ is to be found in plain sight in every copy of the New Testament. What did we actually know about Jesus Christ the man? What we don't find is this person who appears as some sort of spectre within that, that historical tableau called Jesus. He doesn't have a mark at all. Now that is a dilemma for those who believe in him because on the one hand he supposedly overturned the, the world, it turned the world upside down and triggered off this massive movement but on the other hand he leaves no trace in the historical record. In all of this we're dealing with literature, we're not dealing with history. So the answer is no, there is no um, history to this character of Jesus, it's entirely a literary creation. And the penny drop, the penny drop that Jesus, as a human being, never existed. The storyline of Jesus is fiction. It was based upon a military campaign of a Roman Caesar named Titus Flavius. The reason that people have not recognized that the character Jesus Christ is fiction is simply because they haven't understood the genre that the Gospels were written in. The Gospels are in fact a Roman mockery of a kind of literature that the Jews produced in the first century. Well, there is no support at all for, for an historical Jesus. And also the Bible preaches so much hate, which is sick, and so many people claim to get their morals from the Bible, which if that's true, I don't really want you around me um, because it teaches about racism and killing everyone and also how to beat your children specifically there is a way to beat them correctly if you look at Proverbs chapter 20 verses 29 through 30 and um, pretty much if you don't beat your children Proverbs 13 24 then you don't love them um, you can beat the foolishness out of your kid. And stubborn and rebellious children should be taken to their town elders and stoned to death. Wow, I should have died a long time ago. This fits perfectly into Roman propaganda purposes. And then you have, in general, the portrayal of Jesus as the peaceful Jew who is wandering around in what is depicted as a sort of a pastoral scenes talking to fishermen and farmers and so forth, when in fact, this is a war zone. Judea is a war zone. And you ask yourself, well, why is it not portrayed as a war zone? I mean, they really had it down pat. They, kept, they have Jesus saying, render unto Caesar what is Caesar's, which is basically in response to talking about money. Whose benefit would that be? To, so blatantly obvious. <laughs> في بلاد العرب السعيدة تحديدا في نجران على ركوك أحضرها معه إلى دمشق والقدس وكذلك الأمر هذه الركوك, الركوك كانت تتكلم عن قصة حياة النبي عيسى عليه السلام وقد ساعدته كثيرا هذه الركوك لبولس 
بكتابة الدين الجديد الذي أطلق هو عليه اسم العهد الجديد بولس بنفسه أطلق على هذا الدين الجديد الذي كتبه العهد الجديد فوجد في نجران ماذا وجد في نجران؟ وجد في نجران الركوك التي تكلم عنها هو والركوك يا جماعة رك والرك هو الجلد المكتوب عليه والركوك في اللغة الفرنسية بارشمان بارشمان بالإنجليزية وهي الأوراق أو مامبرانا التي تحدث بولس بنفسه عنها في الرسالة تحديدا التي أرسلها إلى الابن الحبيب تيمو ثاوس إذ يقول في هذه الرسالة بادر أن تجي إلي سريعا الرداء الذي تركته أحضره معك متى جئت والكتب أيضا ولا سيما الركوك التي أحضرها من نجران ولا سيما الركوك هذه الرسالة كتبها بولس بنفسه إلى الأبن الحبيب توما أو كما يقولون تيموثاوس الآن هذه الركوك جلبها بولس من نجران إذا يتضح هذا يتضح من هذا أن بولس كان لديه ركوك مهمة اعتمد عليها واستند إليها في دعوته إلى يسوع وهذه الركوك كانت مكتوبة طبعا بالأرامية العربية تتكلم عن عيسى المسيح النبي العربي الذي جاء قبل يسوع المسيح وهذا أكبر دليل ساطع وقاطع بأن عيسى المسيح النبي العربي كما قلت وجد قبل يسوع المسيح لأن كما رأينا بولس أحضر معه هذه الركوب من نجران وكانت رسائل تتكلم عن قصة حياة عيسى المسيح كنبي كذلك وجد بعض المصادر التي تحدثت عن فرقة من النصارى الغلات من غلات النصارى التي كانت تؤله تؤله أو نسبت الألوهية لعيسى والتي ذكرت هذه القصة عن الغلات من النصارى في القرآن الكريم ذكرت في القرآن الكريم يقول العلماء والمؤرخون وهذه المصادر اعتمد عليها بولس كمصدر أساسي لكتابة العهد الجديد إذا بولس قد نسخ قصة حياة عيسى المسيح ونسبها زورا وبهتانا إلى يسوع المسيح وهو يعترف بذلك كذلك هذه المصادر التي اعتمد عليها بولس كمصدر أساسي لكتابة العهد الجديد كان يوحنا وتوما ولوقا على علم بهذه المصادر وكذلك يقول المؤرخون لابد أن هذه الركوك التي أحضرها بولس من نجران بقيت موجودة بعد بولس واستخدمت كمصادر أساسية لكتابة الأناجيل 